uh, by Josh Zimmerman. Uh, he's a colleague in the iSchool, and he's going to speak to us about American archivists articulating archives across ages, a work in progress, many case study of uh, SAA presidential addresses. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Well, I, like uh, Pat said, I'm Josh Zimmerman. I'm a lecturer in the uh, MARA program and an archivist and records manager at the Catholic Archdiocese of Seattle. Um, the title of my talk today is American Archivists Articulating Archives Across the Ages, a work in progress in many case study uh, of SAA presidential addresses. Aside from the uh, annoyingly alliterative title, I wanted to present some of the uh, early work on a content analysis project um, that will hopefully form part of an upcoming MARA course tentatively entitled um, The Professional Image of Archivists and Archives in Popular Culture. So just as there are, are themes that arise when archivists and um, archives are invoked in popular culture, I wanted to find out what terms uh, we as archivists have used to talk about archives and archivists. So I wanted to present any potential changes over time in a sort of visually meaningful way, and hopefully I, I achieve that. So my source for this project is 74 years of the Society of American Archivists Presidential Addresses. These addresses are remarks given by the president at, at the annual meeting. And, and then they're then published in the American Archivist, the uh, Society's Journal. These uh, addresses have been digitized in PDF, and luckily SA has uh, posted the links to all of these uh, articles on one, um, uh, one page. I chose these addresses because I feel that this is the uh, most concise conception of the value of archives and archivists uh, in the profession. And since they date back to 1939, uh, around when the society was founded, uh, they also serve as a great corpus to do this type of long-range content analysis. Uh, so how did I approach this data? Um, so I divided it into um, the 74-year uh, time period into 20-year increments. As you can see I added a, another year at the beginning to round things out. Um, I also removed the header and footer information from each page. So if I included that, it would have severely skewed all of the results uh, as every other page contained the word, uh, words American Archivist or the title of that particular address. I didn't, however, remove the footnotes. Um, this probably accounts for the prominence of American uh, in the American Archivist, the journal, uh, in, in the results. Next, I focused only on words and not phrases. That means I didn't do any you know, formal coding. So therefore, it's a content analysis, but uh, it's not an in-depth one. Um, and so finally, to create um, the word, word cloud, I used Worded Out's default omission, omissions list which includes words such as a, also am, an, and are, and so among countless others, uh, probably 80 or 50 or so. Um, so for tools, I use QDA Minor Lite to import the PDF articles from SAA's website and to clean up, that, um, clean up all the data, uh, which is the real time consuming part of this project. Then using QDA uh, Minor Lite, I exported all the PDF files to text files. Uh, then I found a Windows command line script that took all the texts in a given folder and combined them into one large text file for, for each, each era. And then I pasted these into the uh, worded out for the word cloud uh, visualizations and, the, uh, and uh, something called write words for the actual word counts. So here's, here, here's my warning slide. Um, I wanted to present some warnings before I go on. So as the title suggests, this is a work in progress. I've only really had a couple weeks to really think about all of this stuff, um, and I wanted to get something out for this for this uh, conference. Um, also, as a lecture for a research methods course, I, I feel it's my duty uh, to offer another war warning regarding the data. Uh, I looked at data from just one country, the United States, uh, one professional organization, SAA, and even more one subset of, of that literature. Uh, in that organization, i.e. the presidential addresses. So extrapolating beyond the country and this particular professional agency is extremely hard to do. And um, uh, But taking all these limitations of the scope and the data into um, 
Oop, skipped ahead one. There, it's still on there. Um, I do offer a few conclusions, uh, albeit tentatively, uh, at the very end. Um, and finally, there are a few slides that are pretty busy, and I know that it's against all of the rules of good presentation design and etiquette, but I wanted to give folks the opportunity to go back and check out the slides if they're, if they're interested. Um, there we go. Um, there were a few distinct uh, data challenges that I, occur, uh, the, that I encountered in this project. The first was uh, QDA minor light really turned a few of the, addre the addresses from the 2000 to 2013 period into unreadable messes by adding an extra space after each letter. Uh, so if I take this uh, any further, I'll, uh, I'll need to go back and maybe get a better OCR or maybe change the fonts or, or just kind of roll up my sleeves and do a ton of, of manual cleanup. Um, another challenge was that my data were missing two addresses uh, from 1969 and 1985. I guess they say SAA didn't digitize them or maybe they weren't published in the first place. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Um, finally, given my time limitations and the time intensiveness of, of phrase coding, I wasn't able to go beyond the simple sort of word crunching and um, where, and words don't always reveal the context as, as much as phrases uh, would have. So as I mentioned, these slides are really busy, as you can see. So I thought I'd break down how I visualize this. You can see the time period in the top left. It's pretty easy, uh, followed by the total words during that period. Uh, then the, the word cloud, the uh, worded out word cloud um, below with weighted words, um, which despite the omissions list still includes some extremely common and unhelpful words such as more, only, now, and about. Uh, on the right side you can see some selected terms and their occurrence rates. Uh, these are totals from uh, right words. It's just sort of a word count uh, tool. I've deleted some of the more common ones that I found in there. Um, and some that were included in the worded out cloud. You can see, also see some of the red text that I've further selected for, for, for attention. Um, so diving into this, this, this sort of era, or I call it the era of presidential discourse. Uh, the profession, at least in the United States, was, was still in its infancy and, you know, SAA was founded in, in 1936. So this is, this is sort of the first uh, time period. And this is the war and post-war period. So you can see the word war is pretty prominent and prevalent in the word count. Um, and as the term government attests, many archivists worked for state or federal governments at the time. You can see in the term records beats out even archives and archivists by a large margin in this period. Um, this the period, 1960 to 1980, uh, this period saw sort of my, well, my favorite, Gerald Hamm's archival edge article uh, or presidential address uh, that sort of challenged the white male rich, so sort of the pioneer version of archives uh, that was really popular at the time. It's also the rise of university archives and special collections um, witnessed by the appearance uh, of the term university in the corpus. Additionally, uh, the National Association of Government Archives and Records Administrators, NAGARA for short, was formed in 1974 um, to address uh, these government archives and archivists at the state and local federal level. Um, this may have been the reason for government sort of drop in occurrence. So they, a lot of people were moving over there. They were dissatisfied. Um, <clears throat> and the next slide, uh, the 80s and 90s, or 80s through 2000s, sorry. Um, we see the growth of the terms like information, which coincides with the uh, appearance of rebranded library schools as high schools. Um, the term electronic makes its appearance at the top of the list, um, in the top of the list. Um, education also makes its appearance um, as more archives degree programs sprout up and uh, the profession really starts to uh, reflect on how we educate new archivists. And the uh, final uh, period, uh, during the opening decade uh, and a half of the 21st century, we see terms like information that gets even more popular. Um, and the term digital appears prominently, as does diversity. Uh, so it 
broadly reflects that rise of digital preservation in the profession and, and some of the diversity efforts uh, that were undertaken by uh, some of the past presidents. Um, this is also the era that archivists discovered sort of the quote-unquote power that they wield over the past. Uh, and, and you can see power sort of becomes uh, more popular as well. And so, sort of to conclude, um, I, as I write tentatively, um, uh, all of this stuff needs uh, clearly needs some more work, the data and the analysis. Um, but it's, you know, it's pretty clear that you know, as the total totals per era attest, presidents were writing more. You know, SAA presidents were writing more. There's more words. So we see uh, in the 74 years we witnessed an increase um, from around. 80,000 to over 110,000. Um, I think this represents sort of an increased professionalization um, from the early years to now um, as we sort of take more time to reflect on, on the profession. And just as the organizational priorities shift from president to president, they also shift from era to era. Um, they reflect uh, in generally uh, cultural changes and shifts that are happening inside and outside of the profession. Um, this is witnessed in the popularity of so the recapping, so war and government in the first era, university uh, in the second and, and the third, and the rise of information, digital, electronic, diversity terms in the fourth era. Uh, one big surprise for me um, was the continued importance and, and appearance of the term records, um, which seems to have diminished you know, slightly uh, in popularity over the years, but nevertheless sort of continues to play a, a huge and vital role in the in the uh, presidential addresses, I think the total is like two two thousand one hundred and forty seven words total. Um, I would have expected a, maybe a more of a drop off in the later two eras as we sort of move to sort of information and we move to um, other things, but it, it continued to play a big role. Um, so some of my next steps, um, possible next steps, um, QD minor lights pretty. Uh, it, pretty robust and it's way more robust than what I used it for for this this sort of mini project. I could use its full functionality sort of do some um, <clears throat> further uh, refinement and manually code some of these phrases uh, of value. And I could also try to uh, separate the citations and, and sort of uh, clean it up and get a more accurate uh, corpus to work with. Um, do some more cleanup maybe to reuse this project not only for the popular culture archives sort of imagery, imagery course but also for my research course is using sort of an example of content analysis. Um, so yeah that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, so thank you for, for listening.